Greetings, school families. Welcome to our devotion for Wednesday, May 20th. Uh, today is the day before uh, a part in the church year, a day in the church year that we know as Ascension. This is the day where Jesus ascended into heaven. So we know that we've been hearing that he lived a perfect life, died on the cross, rose again on Easter, right? And then hung around here on this earth for a little bit and uh, just comforting his disciples, training them, teaching them some more stuff. Uh, and then eventually um, he would bless them. Uh, he would tell them to go and make disciples of all nations. And then you would they would see him then ascend into heaven, almost like a balloon floating up to heaven. And we know, and they were to see him again on this earth no more, the disciples. Now, uh, someday if we are here on this earth, when judgment day happens, we're going to see Jesus descending from heaven in the very same way that he ascended. And, um, you know, if, if, if that does happen while we're here on this earth, if Judgment Day does occur, um, and we see that happening, we'll know what's happening. We'll know what's going on. We'll know that it's Judgment Day and it's time to go to heaven uh, because we'll see Jesus descending. Others might be confused, but we as Christians will know exactly what's going on. Um, let's begin our devotion with an ascension prayer. We pray. Dear Father, we thank you for sending Jesus, your only Son, to die for our sin. We know that he has risen from the dead and has returned to heaven. Bless us today as we worship him with great joy. Amen. You ever hear of helium? <clears throat> helium is what goes into balloons to make them float uh, and, and ascend into the air. When we take a balloon, and maybe some of you are able to take a balloon, stretch it out, and then blow it up, um, you'll notice that it doesn't float up to the ceiling after you blow it up with your air. And that's because um, your air is not made out of helium. So helium is a gas, and, and hydrogen is also a gas that is lighter than air. So what happens when you fill a balloon up with it, it floats, it goes up. And um, they, they used to use hydrogen to, uh, to fill, you know, fill up uh, balloons and, and uh, ships called zeppelins, uh, big blimps, right? Blimps are filled with helium today, uh, but they don't use hydrogen anymore because what they figured out is that hydrogen is flammable. And there's really nothing that ruins a birthday party more than when the birthday balloons burst into flames. And so they go with helium now. And helium is also fun for another reason. You know, sometimes you take the helium in the balloons and, right, then you start talking about the chipmunk. <clears throat> and um, so sometimes maybe that's what you know helium uh, for one of its uses. kind of makes your voice sound a little funny. Uh, but helium, you know, you fill balloons with it mostly. And then uh, sometimes it's fun to just... You know, you try not to, you know, I mean, it's kind of sad, right, when when a young child, like, loses their balloon and they're outside because they can't get it back. It just kind of floats and floats. But sometimes, you know, it's kind of fun just to watch it float and float and float away higher and higher and higher. And you you, you watch it, you, know, you see where it goes, and then you don't see it anymore. And you kind of wonder, gee, I wonder where that's going to land. Uh, and that's, you know, something that you might see. Maybe you've seen that before. Maybe, unfortunately, you've, you know, let one go uh, and uh, could not get it back. But it, you know, is kind of fun to watch. This kind of reminds us of what happened to Jesus on Ascension. So just like the balloons that float up and up and up and up and all of a sudden you can't see them anymore, that's what happened to Jesus. Here's Jesus addressing his disciples right before he ascended into heaven. They, they were to see him on this earth no more. However, he did express to them that he would be with them always to the very end of the age. Let's hear that section of scripture here. Luke 24, verses 44 to 53. Verse 44, he said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be filled or fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Okay, so uh, basically he gives them some instructions, right? And then uh, we're told, verse 50, when he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, 
he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually at the temple praising God. So I want you to note their reaction. So, you know, they were, uh, when Jesus had died, had been crucified, they were sad, right? Because they thought they weren't going to see Jesus anymore. And maybe he wasn't this uh, savior that he had promised because they killed him. And that wasn't supposed to happen. But you, you see, they weren't listening to him. Um, he, he told them that this was all supposed to happen. And then notice that after uh, appearing to them after he rose and then uh, blessing them, uh, telling them about uh, Pentecost, basically, they, they, he was telling them, you know, uh, there's going to be something going on in Jerusalem uh, in which uh, and that's the, the story when they got the flames on their heads and then the Holy Spirit came to them and, and allowed them to, to do uh, his work of, of beginning to spread the word, uh, God's word throughout. Uh, but notice that while he was blessing them and taken up into heaven, they weren't sad. They weren't focusing on how much they're going to miss him and all that, but they were hopeful. They, they, they worshiped him. They returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and then they continually praised God for it. So they had learned something. I guess they had grown a lot and figured some things out in the last uh, few months um, because they kind of saw Jesus for what his mission really was. They, they finally got it. And it's a good thing, too. The timing was really good because they were going to be the ones that are, were going to have to go and spread the word now. And so, you know, Jesus' ascension, I, I picture it to be very much like those balloons that ascend up into the, into the sky. That, that was the scene. That was the picture. And, and maybe that helps put a, a little picture of our, in our minds of, of maybe what went on uh, at ascension. Now, eventually, um, they would have the flames on their head. They, they were speaking in a bunch of different languages that they didn't know uh, so that they were able, able to preach and teach God's word to those who had who spoke all those different languages because uh, Pentecost was a, a big celebration. And there were people from other countries speaking different languages in town at the time. And so they were able to preach the gospel and minister to a lot of the people that were there because the Holy Spirit uh, came upon them and allowed them to, to do all these things. The Holy Spirit also um, allows us to do some things like that as well. When Jesus gave the uh, disciples uh, the Great Commission right before he ascended, which we didn't hear in that section, but uh, it is in another gospel where uh, he told them to uh, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, uh, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. By the way, thank you, teachers, for having me memorize that, because I still have that up here, and I'm, I'm able to use that at times like this. So um, the Great Commission was given to the disciples, but it's also given to you and me as well. He tells us to go, to go and make disciples of all nations, to, to preach the word. And he also doesn't say, oh, by the way, uh, good luck with that. I'm going to go up to heaven now. He says, I will be with you always to the very end of the age. So we don't have to go it alone. Uh, we don't have to carry out the Great Commission all by ourselves, but rather we have Jesus that is with us. And just like the disciples, that gives us joy as well that we are, what a privilege that we are able to do God's work, that, that Jesus is no longer here, but he uses us, sinful human beings, to preach and teach the word. And um, just like the disciples worshipped him uh, in an effort to stay close to him, to, to gain strength, uh, that's something that you're doing right now. You're worshiping God. You may not be in church right now. Someday we will be back to doing that. Someday we will be back in school doing that very same thing. Um, but that doesn't mean that we can't worship him now, that we can't be encouraged now when we need encouraging, and uh, we can't uh, you know, learn more and grow in our faith as worshiping and, and going to church and, and participating in these devotions really provide for us. So just like the disciples were told to carry out the Great Commission, you and I are told to go. Go and make disciples of all nations. He also promises to be with us as we do that. And when we worship, we are getting equipped. We are getting encouraged uh, to do that. Let's also encourage others to carry out that great commission. 
so that as many people as possible can be up in heaven. Because remember, Jesus didn't just, didn't just die for believers. He died for the whole world. And he wants the whole world to be up there with him. And what a privilege, what a joyful task, job that we have uh, to spread that word so that others can be up in heaven with us and our Savior someday. Let's uh, all pray Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. Keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. Into your hands I commend my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. Now, children, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let me hear you. Beautiful. All right, we got some birthdays coming up. So today is Danny, uh, uh, Danny Satian's birthday. And uh, tomorrow is his uh, sibling, Anna Caceres' birthday. Uh, so it's a kind of a two-for-one in that family, it seems like. Uh, so happy birthday to both of you. Danny is an eighth grader, and then uh, Anna, or Anna rather, is a 5 er All right. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this devotion. Uh, continue to stay close, connected to Jesus. Uh, stay in the Word. Uh, you'll get another devotion coming your way, a children's service from the past. Uh, tomorrow and then uh, Friday will be a uh, even though we're not really you know uh, technically virtual school uh, ended on uh, well today it ends um, on Friday uh, I will give an like a kind of a closing um, not really a service but a closing devotion uh, and in which we'll be reminded that while while we may have summer vacation from virtual learning from school uh, let's never take the summer. Uh, to have a vacation away from Jesus. So we'll, uh, that'll serve as a reminder of that as well. All right, everybody, hopefully you have a, a great day, and we'll see you then.